Well, hi, I'm Taylor. I uh, made this GM screen for D and D. Um, yeah, let me show you how. Let's 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 go in the garage. We've got some bloodwood, chunks of walnut, a stick of maple. But doing a little design like that just to separate the different layers rather than just going straight between the two, bo two woods. First things first was to mill down the stick of maple I had into the small strips I'd be using to separate the bloodwood and the maple. So I used a little Rockler thin strip rip jig to uh, make those strips and it ended up being way easier than I thought it would be. And then I just needed to cut down the walnut to the final widths I wanted for those center panels, which will end up gluing together. You'll see them later in the video. Uh, but this was an easy bit just because they were already squared off on one side, so might as well rip them down to the dimensions I needed while I had the table saw set up. Part of what I'm excited about is I've got these boards, which, if I can remember which way they go, have a nice continuous grain. I don't know if it shows on my camera very well. But the idea is for all of the DM screens coming around, to have one continuous grain in the walnut so it's this nice outside flowy appearance all the way across so we've got our walnut cut to like height and length and our bloodwood is the correct thickness yeah that's all right so i gotta cut the walnut now down to width and i'll be doing that on the bandsaw back there Nothing quite like a well-tuned bandsaw with a nice fresh blade in it to do some resawing. Just look how smooth these cuts come out. I barely have to do any sanding. Alright, let's go and uh, match these boards up and see what this panel is going to look like. This is my first real go at a nice screen like this, so I went for a very simple symmetrical pattern here, but I think it'll turn out really well. Now that I got that pattern looking good, let's go ahead and glue these strips onto the bloodwood using little bandy clamps to hold that in place just while I get the other strip onto the matching piece. And then throw it in some clamps and let it dry. Little bit of movie magic there and take it back out of the clamps. It's looking good. So next up I gotta shave it down so that it's flush on both sides. That'll be quick. Now, the reason I wanted to plane these down flat is I'm going to be joining these boards up using the domino. We'll see that in a minute. And I needed to have a flat reference surface to use for that. So I took my little hand plane and planed and planed and planed some more until finally I had a nice flat meeting edge there with no little lips. Now I get it. It looks like I'm just flexing to use my domino because it's a simple small panel glue up. But the reason it matters here is this is kind of me correcting for a mistake. Where I milled up my wood too thin to start with, I really had no leeway for if my glue ups weren't perfectly level. I couldn't plane them any thinner because, well, I already did that part. And it's going to really matter how thick these boards are for me to embed the magnets in later. So I leaned on my crutch of the domino and got these nice and flush. And then the plus side there is that it makes glue ups really easy. I just put some glue in the middle, stuck them back together, and threw it into some clamps. Oh, and in case it wasn't clear, I'm doing each of these steps four times for the total of four panels. So now that I've got my panels all glued up, it was on to the step of making sure they're all the same length. So I started by just squaring off one end using my crosscut sled. For each of them, I just popped them in and sliced off a little bit of material. And then once I had those all with one reference edge I could use, I popped a stop block into my crosscut sled. You'll note here the stop block is just a one, two, three block that I clamp in place. It's a very high tech solution. But once I have that stop block in place, I can then repeat all of these cuts and make sure that all of my panels end up being the exact same final width. So 
So up until now, it's been a pretty straightforward build of basically making a cutting board. And right about now, I start making it a little bit more interesting. As I mentioned earlier, I had already precisely milled all of these boards up to a certain thickness, whether or not that was the right time to do it. But that thickness was a half of an inch. So here, I'm taking a quarter of an inch round over bit and going over both sides of the edges of this board so that I've got a nice circular half inch diameter round. And that's going to be important earlier when these surfaces mate. Now, a tricky part with cutting end grain, is it's pretty easy to make tear out. So I'd usually leave about the last eighth of an inch and then just go and sand it smooth like this. So, you know, as much fun as this is going back and forth, it was better than having to deal with a bunch of tear out. And, you know, I mean, woodworking is like two thirds sanding anyways, right? And with those roundovers done, the last real little bit of prep for the boards themselves I needed to do was fill in some of the voids. It's the downside of buying the cheaper walnut. So here I took some graphite powder and mixed it with CA glue to create sort of a paste that I could use to fill in these voids. And the upside here, as opposed to a liquid dye or something, is that it's not going to stain the wood or try and leak out. So I just put it in there, let it dry, and then here you got a nice smooth surface with uh, no more big crack that I'm worried about splitting. And the black meshes pretty well with walnut. Now, time for everyone's favorite thing. Just regular plain old sanding and sanding and sanding. So, now got these boards flattened with their nice curved edges. And if you're wondering why I've curved the edges, it's because as a DM screen, these are meant to go like this next to each other and I want nice soft curves where they join. And that's because inside of those corners are going to be <coughs> magnets, which will hold the whole thing together. Magnets that look like this. Now, most magnets you run into, the top is one pole and the bottom is another, but these guys are diametrically polarized, so they snap together on the sides. And so what I'm going to have to do is bore a hole in here, slide in a magnet, and make sure that it can still freely spin so that I don't have to keep track of like which side has which pole sideways. No, they'll just spin inside their holes and stick together. If you've watched any of the Wormwood channel, their Worm Life series on their GM screens, uh, basically that was their idea and I'm stealing it wholeheartedly. Just stealing that idea because it's great and I want it. So that's where we are. I've got my big old pile of magnets here. I think my next move is to make a jig for getting those magnet holes in because getting them straight up and down is really difficult with a hand drill. I've done that once before. I did not like it. If you're wondering yourself, Taylor, why didn't you show me how to make this jig? Well, it's because I was too dumb to remember to film it. But it's basically just some plywood scraps sandwiching the board together. And it doesn't even do that great of a job. Oh well, here it is in action. Got our magnet holes cut. Now is this guy. We take this guy now and pop that in here. And now... Magnets. Right here. To get the magnet to stay in place, I cut some walnut plugs out of some scrap I had laying around. And then I just pop the magnets down in their hole, dab some glue onto the plugs themselves, and squish them in there and let them dry for a little while. Once they're dry, I just took a chisel and pared it down so that we had a nice flush finish and a beautiful little accent piece holding my magnets in. On the face of each screen, I marked out some spots to drill holes to embed some more magnets to attach accessories like acrylic screens or the iPad holder I'll show in a little bit. For this, it was simple. I just marked a half inch from the bottom and then an inch and six inches from both sides and then repeated those same measurements up eight inches from the bottom, which happened to be exactly where the walnut and the maple met.
The last piece of hardware I wanted to include in these whole screens were magnetic bars along the top so that it could take any random bits and bobs of paper and just throw some magnets on and attach them. So if I had a handout or a little card or something I wanted to keep track of, I could easily do that. So here I just laid out some metal on it, got some rough measurements, which ended up being like three quarters an inch from the top, and then used my little angle grinder wannabe to cut the strips to the lengths I needed. Once I had those cut, I just popped them over to the drill press, countersunk some holes so that the screws would sit nice and flush, because nobody likes a bumpy screw. And then I uh, routed a channel for them just using an edge guide on my router. Nothing super exciting here, I just ended up with rounded corners here. As you can see, it doesn't perfectly fit yet. The fix for that, of course, is very easy. You just take a chisel and chop out those corners. Now, of course, it's everyone's favorite part, applying finish. Here, once again, I'm using Rubio Monocoat, every woodworker's favorite right now on YouTube, but for a reason. Super easy to apply, and even like mine when it's been sitting in a can for a long time and you've got little chunks of dried bit, you still just wipe it on and buff it off and you end up with a beautiful, pretty durable finish. And man, you just can't beat the amount of color that pops out of walnut and bloodwood here. Looks just gorgeous. We'll go ahead and wrap the video here with some glamour shots of the finished piece. Overall, I'm really happy with how this turned out. You know, it's pretty simple, all things considered, with the design elements, but it really ends up being a beautiful statement piece at the head of the table, or maybe an imposing piece when you're playing the game. And it's really versatile with all the magnets and setups for accessories. I think I've got a lot of options here. My standard setup right now has got a couple tablets attached to it, but Really, with all the magnets and different little acrylic screens and stuff I'm trying out, I've got a lot of options. Anyways, if you enjoyed this thing, like and subscribe, or, well, don't, but I did roll an at 20, so maybe I've earned it?